This is a follow-up video to number three of the simple linear regression. I'm going to take one step back from that video. Again, we're going to estimate the line. Now, what we have in this example is a car insurance company would like to examine the relationship between the driving experience and insurance premium. What we have here is like 10 drivers, and for each driver, we measure their driving experience and insurance premium. So let's say X is measured in years and Y is measured in dollars. So then each driver has two two measurements. It's telling us that x is the the driving experience is the x variable that is the independent or explanatory variable that goes along the all on the scatter plot goes along the horizontal axis. And what we can see from this scatter plot is like that as the uh, driving experience goes up, the premiums come down and in a linear way. So it's a straight. Uh, what the simple linear regression model says is there is a straight line relationship between the two. And here it is. So this denotes the line and that's the error. So just ignore that. If we just look at this bit here I'm pointing at, this form of straight line between y and x where alpha is the intercept and beta is the slope. Now why we need the error is because even if that is a true relationship in the real world, sometimes you are not actually that this is fully satisfied, sometimes you're slightly above, below, or on the line in this case. So you could be slightly bigger than zero, below zero, or equal to zero. Okay, so we can imagine that there is a line here with a positive intercept and a negative slope. The subscript i's on the y and x just denote the uh, ith driver. So here's got driver 1 to 10. Because remember, each driver has two measurements, an x va value and a y value. The thing is, we don't know what the intercept and the slope is, so we have to guess it from the data. This is the estimation problem. And when we estimate it, what we have is this. The estimated regression line takes this form. No notice the notation now. So we put alpha, and we to distinguish it between the true alpha, we put a hat on it. Say this alpha hat, which is a number, is an estimate for alpha. Beta hat is an estimate for beta. In other words, it's the estimate for the intercept, it's the estimate of the slope. There is no hat on the x because that's just data, guys. But there is a hat on y because y depends on the right hand side and these depends on estimates. So this must be, this is also an estimate of y. And if you look at this form here, this is exactly the formula of a straight line, but of the estimated line. Now, how we find the estimates of beta hat and alpha hat is we may use this least squares estimator and here's the formula and in blue for the slope and for the intercept so you might have to memorize this for your homework or exam for your course what you can see is like this beta hat looks more messy than alpha hat indeed it is now to simplify the calculation you can actually calculate beta hat as in red. So the red expression is the same as this blue expression. I'm not doing this blue expression because if you look on YouTube, there's so many YouTube videos that's doing it this way. But guys, you would never do this one, or you, if you've got any sense, you wouldn't. You, you'd use this one because it's much simpler to compute. So you do this one for your homework for any exams. We note here that the alpha hat depends on the beta hat. So does it matter the order that you calculate these two things? Yes, you'd put, want to find the slope, estimate of the slope first, and then plug it or substitute it into this expression here. So let's break down this method. First, step one, we want to get hold of the components. So n stands for the sample size, it's 10. x bar denotes the sample mean. That just means add up all the values of x and divide by here the sample size, which is 10. Similarly, y bar denotes the sample mean of y. So these are the numbers, just check it. Now, if we look back at x bar square, this sample mean of x, this means the sample mean of x all squared. So take this number, square it, that gives me that. Now we come to the products, sum of the products. So what does this notation say? It says like for each driver, multiply that driver's x value and y value and do it for each driver and add them up. So if I just take an excerpt here of the data set, for the first driver, your x is 6, y is 66, so multiply those two. Second driver, do the same, 3 times 88, so on, and add the numbers together. So you can see what I'm doing here. I've left it in grey because once you get used to this, you, you wouldn't need to write this down you're working. So just simply write that is equal to this figure here. Similarly, sum of xi squared just takes 
take each x value, square it, and do the same thing. So 6 squared plus 3 squared, and so on. And just write down the number, which I've done here. OK, then we've got the components, guys. And now to plug it in. I'll just say before I do the working is like most of this is just routine. We have to think about the decimal places and uh, how we can check for working to see whether we've made any obviously errors. OK, we've already said that we've got to compute the slope before the intercept. We could also see from the scatter plot that we expect the slope to be negative and the intercept to be positive. So that's the kind of values I'm looking for. All right, so here is the one that's easy to compute for the slope. Substituting in the values. And I have a number here. OK, now I've done it to four decimal places. I've written out on this side here what, it, what this fraction actually is and to more decimal places here. I've taken it to four decimal places. Now, three decimal places, OK. Why? We have to think about the units of Y here. Y is in dollars. So we know if we take two decimal places, that's basically down to cents. OK, so then I do decimal places beyond that. So three decimal places of, or, or four or five or whatever. Why is because then at the end they can round up to the nearest cent if they like. So here I've chosen it to four decimal places. I mean, if you're in doubt, always more is more is kind of better. Um, because then there's no like leeway to say, oh, it's not accurate enough. All right. Next, we calculate the intercept. This is easier because I've got the beta hat now. But look at what I do here. I do this substitute here, x bar substitute into there. But the beta hat, I have not taken this and transcribed it down here. I put the kind of the, the fraction here. All right. In other words, in its full form here. Why is because I've got accuracy. So I do that, and I note that I've got put this in brackets because it's a minus here and this beta hat is a minus as well so you know minus times a minus is going to give me a plus sign another way instead of putting this fraction into here is save whatever the answer you have here into your memory and then use it recall it when you're doing this calculation all right so the full figure looks well more full figure dot 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 looks like this I've rounded also to four decimal places step three we now then state the fitted line, and it's just with alpha hat, which is a number, beta hat, which is that number, and there you go. Some things to note, guys, is when you're stating your answer, it's y hat, not y. And over here, it's x, not x hat. So all we're doing is we're just putting the numbers of alpha hat and beta hat, what we found into here, into our estimated regression line. OK, let's just go back up before we c continue. How do we look for ob obvious errors? Well, sum of xi squared would expect something which is non-negative because you xi squared, square of any number, is not negative, right? So if you add them up, it can't be negative. So if you end up with negative here, that can't be right. Similarly, here is sum of some term which is squared, so that sum cannot be negative. So in other words, this blue here matches this red, by the way, in the denominator exactly. So this difference can't be negative either. Notice as well, guys, like the bottom cannot equal, well, it can. But if it equals to 0, dividing this finite number by 0 is undefined, then the least squares fails. So in other words, you can't, a condition that least squares works, this is a comment really, is that the denominator, this guy here, cannot be 0. Well, when is it 0? It's exactly 0 if each of the x values are the same. What does that mean? It means like basically you've just got a vertical line all x values with different values of y. So basically you don't have a kind of a regression line. OK, then now moving on, I want to do the sketch of the line. Well, to do the sketch of a line, you know you need to have two points to sketch a line. So what we're going to do is pick any two points, substitute it in here, get the associated y value for that x, and then that's it. So let's say I pick a value x is 10, substitute into here, just do this calculation, then y is about 60 point, 61. OK, so in other words, if I go along here, 10 is up here about 61, then I'm on the line. 
Okay. Well, this gives one point on the line. I can take another point, but another point is quite obvious because, look, an easy one is just to pick x to be 0 because then that is basically the intercept. And we're going to read straight off the intercept is 78.4, so it will be over here. And I've got two points, and I can sketch the line. But when I sketch the line, guys, notice the following. The line hasn't gone all the way touching the intercept. I know some people always kind of take it back to the intercept, but we mustn't. Why? Because the interval of the data here ranges on the x value between 3 and 25. Look, x value, smallest value is 3, all the way up to 25. The estimates for the intercept and slope is based on the interval of this data for x is between 3 and 25. If you take the line back there to the intercept or take this further along, that is what we call extrapolation. You are assuming, and it might not be true, that the relation, this straight line relationship uh, continues beyond the outside the sample. Okay, and who's to say it does or doesn't because we don't have the data. That's called extrapolation, so we don't want to extrapolate. So for that reason we keep this line within the interval of the x. So now we've spent all this time and effort doing this regression line, what's the use of regression? Well, there's many uses of regression but the two biggest uses is use for prediction. So if you're a software engineer, computer scientist, that's your reason for building models. So this is just like, for this simple case, is you give me an x value as an input, I'll give you as an output a predicted value simply by calculating this. And for this model, it's basically the same as just reading off the graph. You give me an x value, I read off this graph here, that's the predicted y. Okay, that's the prediction problem. On the other hand, if you're somebody who's trying to study like this causality kind of relationship, then you are more interested in interpreting the parameter. So if you're doing an econometrics course, this is where you are spending all your time interpreting the coefficients. So here we would say, if you're interpreting the coefficient, the slope coefficient, um, if for additional year increase of experience, driving experience, the premium on average will come down by about $1.75. And this is supposing that the x value is between our interval 3 to 25. So a comment is like, you know, this is only starting step of regression, which is a vast subject. Is this model any good is a question you might think about. Well, guys, to say that a premium depends on experience, you might think, can I improve upon the prediction for premiums? Well, you can imagine that premiums depend on other factors apart from experience. Could depend on like part of the country you're in, the gender, many things I'm sure you can think about. And so that takes us on to a model where you have more than one independent or explanatory variable. That's what we call multiple linear regression. And you can see how we compute the least squares estimators, in that case, in videos problems one and two. The method we use here, the least squares, uses these summation kind of expressions because it's just, this is you know this is just two unknowns two and um, but once you have more parameters then we need to step up to linear algebra because such summation expressions get basically unhandleable now if you're an econometrician you'd be interested to know well how good is this estimate of this beta hat here well one question is is it actually significant or is it just due to all this randomness that's making it look like it, there is something there? And that's where you do a t-test and that's example is done in problems 5 and 6. So they're just a flavor of where you're going to go from here. So finally guys if you don't believe me that this way is better than that try this question doing this way compared to this way and then basically be satisfied that this is much simpler.